this video is about the first project that I'm doing with my new Precision Matthews PM25 MV milling machine. I bought the milling machine primarily to notch tubing for bicycle frame building, but I haven't been to school yet for milling and turning. I have to wait three more weeks, so I picked a really easy project. I'm just squaring up this three and a half inch 120 wall mild steel square tubing. This is just the square tubing that you buy at the steel yard. I use this tubing to make these boxes to hold my TIG filler material and my gas welding filler material. This is my TIG cart and so you can see I've got stickers to show which sort of filler material is in there. The diameter and the type. I like Miller stuff so I got some Miller stickers on eBay. This is my gas welding cart. So I put the gas welding filler material on there. And now I'm making boxes for my stick electrode collection. So what my plan is, is to put the three and a half inch square tubing directly in my vise. I made the vise perpendicular to the table so that I make a straight cut and as far as the RPM selection is concerned I use the formula surface feet per minute times 3.82 divided by the cutting diameter my cutting tool is part of a kit that I bought from Little Machine Shop it's high-speed steel and for the surface feet per minute I'm using the value of 100 surface feet per minute. So if you do the math, 100 surface feet per minute times 3.82 divided by 0.75, which is the diameter of the cutting tool, I come up with 509.33. When I adjusted my RPM, I got it to 511. So that's a starting point for my RPM. I'm taking off maybe, well, sometimes it's like two thousands, but usually I'm going for like between 10, 15, maybe 20 thousands each cut. Uh, figure if I go more than that, I need to use some coolant, which I'm willing to do. And I understand that if I use a higher RPM, I'll get a better finish. This piece here I was working on yesterday, I got some chatter so I'm going to try to improve that today. So the first issue I had was that the chip shield is wanting to get in the way because this workpiece is sort of wide. And maybe one day I'll remove the chip shield, but it's on there today. So what I did is I lowered the z-axis enough to where it's not going to hit my workpiece. And then I lowered the z-axis and locked the z-axis using the z-axis lock levers located on the left side of the machine. So the z-axis is fixed. And I lowered the spindle just enough to where the cutting tool will get through that 120 wall. And then I locked the spindle using a spindle lock on the left-hand side of the machine. When I go to make my cut, after I touch off, I, when I make the cut, I lock the x-axis. Of course, the y-axis is not locked. Those are the y-axis lock levers. The y-axis is obviously not locked because I'm moving three and a half inches in. Okay, we'll see how this goes. The camera's really close to the milling machine, so I apologize if it vibrates. So here I'm doing the work. I'm gonna start by turning on the milling machine, obviously. The RPM I have is 513. And here I'm going to touch off. So here I am touching off. I'm going to back off the x-axis a little, make sure the x-axis is unlocked. I'm going to back off a little. 
I'm gonna lock the x-axis here. I'm still trying to touch off. Looks like I'm doing a pass there. It's a real light pass. Good. It's touched off. So now I unlock the x-axis lever, zero the x-axis on the DRO. The pass I'm going to do is going to be 10, I want to go 12, 12.2 thousandths. Lock the x-axis. I've already checked that the spindle and the z-axis are locked. So here's my pass of 11 thousandths on the mild steel. That is a really nice smooth finish. I'm very happy with that finish. Now the mill's vibrating. So it looks like that's about as an aggressive of a pass as I would want to do. So for another pass, I'm going to unlock the x-axis, zero the x on the DRO, and I'm going to be very patient today, and I'm only going to do a pass of 11.2 thou. So what I do is I lock the x-axis, going to get some cutting fluid in there. Come in here. Getting very few chips. But it seems to be working really nicely with the cutting fluid. I'm getting some chatter, which makes me glad that I'm not a more aggressive pass. Yeah, I'm getting a small amount of chips. So I'm going to come off all the way. I'm going to unlock the x-axis lever, zero the x on the DRO. I'm going to come in ten thousandths. Lock the x-axis. fair amount of chips. A little slow feed. There may be a small amount of chatter, but then again there might be no chatter. I'm smelling warm cutting oil. I'm going to have a look here at the cutting tool. Looks good. I kind of lost track of where I was. I think I am going to make another pass. This pass will be 10.4 thousandths. And as I do, I lock the x-axis lever, the x-axis lock lever. Nice slow feed for the steel. This would take all day. Mills vibrating a little bit. I 
and that's how this goes. I'll make one more pass because I know that it'll be a better view if I make another pass. So for this final pass in the video, I'll do what I've been doing, unlock the x-axis lever. I guess I'm going to try 11 thousandths. Now the x-axis is locked, and here's my pass. Let's see what's vibrating. The mill is vibrating, the chip tray is vibrating a lot, the, the stand is vibrating. Everything's vibrating. So not surprising that I'm getting chatter. Looks like this is going to require a lot of cutting fluid. So I'm going to back this all the way out and I'll show a view of what I have done. So this is what it looks like from this angle. You see the cutting tool. You see I still have to remove like 20 thousandths. And here's my cut. And the cutting tool seems like it's holding up okay. So I'm not sure what adjustments to make. I could fiddle a little bit with the RPM. I certainly use a lot of coolant. I could make adjustments with my feed rate. If you have any ideas, you can leave it in the comments. Thank you for watching.